Hi brothers, Marvin here from TechBeerall.com where we do unboxings, reviews, and sexy B-rolls. And today we have yet another special video for you guys. It's finally time for me to go back to a mid tower case and we're going to do it in style. I'm going to build a non-RGB white and brown PC build around the Cooler Master TD500 mesh white chassis and a bunch of Noctua fans and cooler. Now don't get me wrong, I really like my previous Inwin A1 Mini ITX build but it has a lot of downside for my personal workflow and efficiency. So we're going to fix those in this new build and stick around because I'm also going to give away some awesome merch from Cooler Master. With that being said, let's get into it. Alright guys, before we start, I would just like to give a huge shout out to Cooler Master, Asus, Noctua, and Team Group for sponsoring this build. Thank you very much for your support guys. Now, one of the things that are holding me back on my mini ITX build is the IOs, specifically the lack of a USB Type-C port which I find really valuable in today's electronic devices. I also find the rear audio jacks a bit limiting in terms of the number of audio devices you can plug in. And other things such as the bias flashback button and more USB ports are also a great consideration to go back to an ATX motherboard. Another thing is storage options. With a mini ITX chassis like the Inwin A1, you can only use 2.5 inch storage devices which I find in the long run one of the biggest downsides of a small form factor build. I have a lot of data from creating content and I found myself using an external dock to accommodate all that. And lastly, with a small form factor, cooling and noise levels are also a great deciding factor for me. My Inwin A1 temps are pretty good, however, during heavy load, the entire tiny system is undesirably loud, which is quite vital, especially when I'm shooting or recording videos. We're going to fix all that with this new build, so let me introduce to you all the components that we're going to use and the reason why I picked them. Now, full disclosure, this is a personal build and the components were picked based on my personal preference and needs so this is not exactly built around a certain budget and you can definitely build a similar one for less. Alright, so starting with the motherboard, since we're after a certain white and brown theme, we're going to use the black and white ASUS RGSTRIX B550A motherboard with specifications and features that checks out all my boxes. In terms of IOS, it has a USB Type-C port, a bunch of USB 3.2 and 2.0 ports, and it also has a nifty BIOS flashback button. Aside from that, I also found the optical SPDIF port valuable for my bookshelf speakers. All of these IOs are nicely protected by an integrated IO shield. The downside here is that it doesn't have an integrated Wi-Fi. Personally, it's not a big deal for me since I'm always using a wired connection and I can just pick up a USB Bluetooth dongle if necessary. Now, in terms of its other features, it has a total of 14 power stages, a substantial heatsink for the VRMs, chipset, and its two M.2 slots, one of which, of course, can support the latest PCIe 4.0 technology. Aside from that, it has all the features ASUS ROG has to offer in terms of both the hardware and software. By the way, I'm also going to make a dedicated video about this motherboard, so make sure to subscribe so you won't miss out. Now, for the processor, we're going to use the same processor I used on my mini ITX build, which is the AMD Ryzen 7 3700X. Now, I know the Ryzen 5000 series has just been released and I'm definitely upgrading to that once the stock starts to normalize. I'll probably get something like the AMD Ryzen 7 5800X as I feel like it is the sweet spot in terms of price to performance value. As for the graphics card, we're going to use the new ASUS Tough Gaming RTX 3070 which came out just recently and is an absolute beast when it comes to its price to performance value. You can check out my dedicated unboxing and review here if you're interested. Now we're also going to mount this graphics card vertically using the Cooler Master Vertical GPU Kit version 2. And don't worry as we'll also discuss about compatibility as I'm sure some of you are going to ask about it. For the memory, we're going to use two sticks of 16GB G-Skill Trident Z Neo 3600MHz CL16 RAM for a total of 32GB, which is plenty enough for my multitasking and gaming needs. For our boot drive, we're going to use a 512GB Team Group MP33 Pro M.2 NVMe SSD which should be sufficient enough for my OS and applications. For my personal data and other files, we're going to use a 1TB Team Group EX Elite SSD. And for everything else like my games, raw files, and whatnot, I'll use my existing 4TB hard drive for that. I'm also going to do a dedicated unboxing and review of the storage devices, so watch out for that as well. Now, I mentioned earlier that one of my issues with my previous mini ITX build is thermals and noise levels. So in order to fix that, we're going to use a Noctua NHU12A to properly cool our AMD Ryzen 7 3700X and for the rest of the components, we're going to use 6 Noctua NF812X25 case fans. This is actually my first time using Noctua products and I must say, 
I am absolutely blown away with the quality of not only the product itself but the packaging and package contents as well. The attention to details is really mind-blowing. For the power supply, we're going to use the gorgeous Cooler Master V850 Gold V2 white version which is absolutely perfect for this white and brown build. It features 80 plus gold efficiency, a silent 135mm FDB fan, and a semi fanless mode with a hybrid switch. This should help us out in minimizing the noise levels of our system, not to mention that the 850 watt capacity is more than sufficient for our RTX 3070 and the rest of the components. Now, all of these awesome components will be housed using my dream chassis, the Cooler Master TD500 mesh in its all white glory. What I like about this is the aesthetic. It looks really darn good with the polygonal design that goes all the way to its side panel. And of course, I also like the front mesh panel, removable dust filter on top, and the general size, design, and build construction of it that should allow for good airflow across all our components while also being beautiful outside. I'm excited about this build, so let's get into the build montage. Rage on that beat, going crazy. This portion of the video is sponsored by VIP SCD Key. VIP SCD Key is an online web store that offers software keys and game keys in a very competitive price and without the hassle of going to a physical store. One of the most frequently used software keys is none other than the Windows 10 key and you can get a legit one from VIP SCD Key for only 17 US dollars. But since you're awesome, you can also use my code SKTBR to get an additional 18% off and get it for only 14 US dollars or around 700 pesos. You can purchase using your Visa, MasterCard, PayPal, and more. And as you can see, I actually purchased one for a PC build. And once completed, you can now activate your license by going to Activation Settings in Windows, click Change Product Key, enter your license, and click Activate. And that's about it. Pretty straightforward, right? So check the link below and don't forget to use my code for an extra discount. Thanks to VIP SCD Key for sponsoring this part of the video. Alright guys, so building inside the Cooler Master TD500 mesh chassis is actually pretty easy. I didn't encounter any significant issue at all. And installing the Noctua NHU12A is pretty straightforward as well, thanks to the nice and easy to understand instruction. Not to mention the actual mounting system is quite intuitive as well. The ASUS RG6 B550A having an integrated I.O. shield makes the motherboard installation seamless. Now, the Cooler Master TD500 mesh chassis comes with 3 pre-installed case fans, which are pretty awesome. But of course, I replaced those with Noctua NFA12X 25 case fans. And it was the easiest, fun installation of my life using the included rubber mounts. For good measure, I also installed the full rubber gaskets, which are ideally made for tight spaces like radiators for maximum airflow concentration. Now, I will probably add one more here at the top, but to be honest, I think that wouldn't be necessary at all. As for the cable management, it is also the easiest cable management I've done in my life since I don't have to worry about extra RGB cables. Not to mention the Cooler Master TD500 mesh chassis has enough room around it with a bunch of cable tie mounting point as well. In addition, mounting the 2.5 inch storage drives are also a piece of cake as I will show you in a minute. Now, I also like the fact that the Cooler Master V850 Gold V2 cables are also white with black connectors, perfect for a black and white build and in this case, a white and brown build. As you can see, cable management is not the best in terms of routing the cables but definitely tidy. Like I said, mounting the 2.5 inch drives are pretty easy. You just have to install the small screws on the drive, install the rubber mounting holes to the chassis, and just shove the drive in there and you're good to go. The overall build experience is quite smooth except for the vertical graphics card installation. The Cooler Master Vertical GPU Kit V2 fits perfectly inside the Cooler Master TD500 mesh chassis, which is expected. 
However, what I wasn't able to account for is the sheer size of the ASUS Tough Gaming RTX 3070 graphics card with the massive Noctua NH212A CPU cooler. I had to settle with a DIY solution by just securing the vertical bracket using a couple of heavy-duty zip ties. I will discuss more about this workaround in a separate video about the Cooler Master Vertical GPU Kit 2, but for now, this will do just fine. Now, another important thing to consider here is the compatibility of the Cooler Master Vertical GPU Kit V2, or actually any existing vertical GPU kit, is the compatibility of the PCIe 3.0 riser cable to the new RTX 3000 graphics cards, which is now PCIe 4.0. What I did here is probably not the ideal solution, but a solution nonetheless. I had to set the PCIe mode in BIOS to PCIe 3.0 instead of auto for this riser to work with the RTX 3070. Technically, it shouldn't post any significant performance hit, but just to make sure, all our benchmarks later were conducted with all the graphics cards connected straight to the motherboard, so don't worry about that. Speaking of benchmarks, let's get into it. Now for this build, we're going to focus more on the performance of the ASUS Tough Gaming RTX 3070, the thermals and ice levels around this Cooler Master TD500 mesh build with Noctua cooler and fans because at this point, we already know the performance of an AMD Ryzen 7 3700X. So let's start with some benchmarks for the ASUS Tough Gaming RTX 3070. In Apex Legends, as you can see, you can definitely play at high refresh rate up to 1440p in very high settings, and you can even play with decent frame rates at 4K resolution. In CSGO, well, you can pretty much game on this at very high settings, and in high frame rate at 4K resolution. So essentially, you can take advantage of those high refresh rate monitors up to 240Hz or so. Now, the same can be said in Rainbow Six Siege at ultra settings. You can also game on this in high frame rate even at 4K resolution. Of course, the same scenario can be observed in Valorant, which is another relatively easy game to run. You can pretty much game on this at max settings and in high frame rate up to 4K resolution. Now, even in Call of Duty Modern Warfare, which is one of those AAA titles that are quite taxing for both the CPU and GPU, you can game on this at very high settings and in high frame rate up to 1440p and still definitely playable at 4K, though in a bit lower frame rates. So as you can see, the performance increase with the new RTX 3000 series, specifically with this ASUS Tough Gaming RTX 3070, is certainly significant. And if you want to see my complete testing, where I compared this with a 2070 Super and a 1070 graphics cards, you can check out my full review here. As for thermals, as you can see, the ASUS Tough Gaming RTX 3070 is relatively cool in both open and closed case testing, using the Cooler Master TD500 mesh with 6 Noctua NF812X25 case fans. As for the real-world use case scenario while playing Call of Duty Warzone, the ASUS Tough Gaming RTX 3070 is also quite cool, maxing out at only around 62 degrees. In terms of the power draw for the graphics cards, the ASUS Tough Gaming RTX 3070 is expectedly higher compared to the 2070 Super and 1070, but like I said in my review of this card, I'll take the small power consumption increase any time of the day for the amount of performance it gives back in return. As for the total power draw of this new PC build straight from the wall, it is just pulling around 370 watts during load, gaming, and Call of Duty Modern Warfare. Now just for the sake of it, here are some benchmarks for the AMD Ryzen 7 3700X. As you can see, even our processor is relatively cool thanks to the Noctua NH212A CPU cooler, the Noctua NF812X25 case fans, and of course the Cooler Master TD500 mesh. Now I don't have to worry about thermals at all for any of my PC components while having this entire system relatively quiet. Speaking of quiet, here are some noise level benchmarks that I did using the fun curve presets of the ASUS B550A motherboard via the ASUS Fun Expert 4 software. As you can see, the noise levels for all the settings except for the full speed are hovering just around 40 decibels, which is really quiet for both open and closed case, and this is because there is no actual load on the system, just different fan curves. On the other hand, at full fan speed, it is hovering around 53 decibels, which is still pretty decent. Now, during actual usage with load playing Call of Duty Warzone, the noise levels are just hovering around 42 decibels, which is just 2 decibels louder than when it's idle, which absolutely blows my mind. Personally, I think investing in the Noctua NHU12 ACPU cooler and the NF812X25 case fans are definitely worth it, especially if you're going after a completely silent build like this. Not to mention, you can even lower it up using the included low noise adapters. Alright guys, before we wrap this up, of course, I gotta compare this build with my previous PC builds, but take this with a grain of salt since these are completely different builds and built at a different time, but still a fun comparison to take a look at. As you can see, the performance increase especially in the graphics department is almost night and day and it's definitely worth the upgrade. Granted, we didn't gain anything from using the same processor, 
but using a completely different chassis and cooling solution helps a ton when it comes to thermal performance and noise levels. Not to mention the additional IOs and storage space we got from going back to an ATX motherboard. Alright guys, like I said, we're going to give away a few merch from Cooler Master. Three lucky winners will win a good quality Cooler Master cap, a cable management prop, and a Cooler Master sticker. We're also going to do another giveaway on my next Cooler Master product review, so make sure to subscribe so you won't miss out. To join this giveaway, all you have to do is like and share this video. Of course, subscribe to this channel. And most importantly, comment down below one good feature of this new build with a hashtag CMTD500. And there you have it guys, thank you for watching. Hopefully you get a thing or two from this build that you can possibly apply to your own PC. Let me know in the comments below what you think about this new build in terms of both the aesthetic with this non-RGB build and of course its overall performance. Would you consider doing the same build? So yeah, again, huge thanks to all the brands that supported this build to Cooler Master, Asus, Noctua, and Team Group. You can get all the components used in this build using the links below. Thank you for watching. Have a great day guys. You're awesome.